In this video, I will uh, show you how to print list of prime numbers between the given range. That means, suppose if I given uh, start value as 1 and stop value is 30, then it prints list of prime numbers between 1 to 30. Suppose if I given start value is 35 and value is 100, then it prints list of prime numbers from 35 to 100. So for this, first we need to open our IDLE tool. I open the IDLE tool and click on file. First we are asking a choice to the user, what is the start value? So using int input combination function, we are trying to collect an input value, enter start value. So input function returns a string, that is the reason we are typecasting into integer and that resultant integer value is holded by n1. So the same statement we need to repeat one more time to read the stop value. This time we change the variable name as n2 and here we mentioned here it is a stop value. Always the stop value is greater than the start value. And next one. So I am iterating a for loop. So for i in with the help of range function I am trying to check whether n1 is prime or not, n1 next number is prime number or not, n1 next 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 numbers are prime number or not. So that means up to n2, n2 is not considered if I sp specified like this, that is the reason I am going to add plus 1 also, plus 1 also, not here it is 1, it is n1. Beginning from n1 up to n2, how can we convey this one? In range function, the python interpreter will not consider the lost element. It consider up to n2 minus 1. That is the reason I added plus 1 here. Now, after that, I have initialized a temporary variable that is called count. That is initialized with 0. And after that, I am taking one more uh, for loop. This for loop is iterating from 1 up to the above control variable. This one. I will explain about how, why I am using two for loops and all. Uh, by taking a word document, I can explain this one. If you see here, suppose there is a number called 4. I want to test 4 is a prime number or not. I need to start dividing with 1. If I want to test 5 is a prime number or not, I need to start dividing by 1. If I want to test 6 is a prime number or not, I need to start dividing by 1. I will increase the font size for better visibility purpose. If you see here. Now, this sequence is continued. If I want to test 4 is prime number or not, I need to test with 2. And 5 also I want to test. So 5 modulus 2 and 6 modulus 2. Similarly, if I want to test 4 is a prime number or not, I need to test with 3, also 5 with 3, also 6 with 3. Similarly, I want to test 4 is prime number or not, 4, 5 modulus 4 and 6 modulus 4. Now, no need to check with 4 modulus 5 and above numbers. If I want to test 4 is prime number or not, I need to start dividing with 1, 2, 3 up to that number that is 4. Now, so this is not required. Similar, but here you can give it 5 modulus 5. Why? Because if I want to test 5 is a prime number or not, I need to start dividing with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then I need to stop it. No need to test with the above numbers, 5 modulus 6, 5 modulus 7 are not required. Similarly, if I want to test 7 is a prime number or not, I need to test with 5. Again, I need to state, uh, sorry, 6, this is 6, uh, numerator is 6, 6 modulus 5. In next iteration, for 4 not required, for 5 also not required, we need to stop here. Why? Because numerator and denominator are equal. 7, sorry, 6 modulus 6. Here also we need to stop like this. If you want to test the given number is prime or not, we need to start dividing that number beginning from 1 up to that number only, up to that number. That means we need to, this 4 is called numerator, numerator and this is called denominator. Numerator means our, in our case it is variable i, denominator means in our case it is j. So i is outer for loop, j is inner for loop. I will show you by highlighting this one. This is numerator, numerator is constant in a particular iteration, only denominators keep on increasing. 1, 2, 3, 4 like this. 
So for if you want to test five is prime number or not, numerator is fixed in all the cases. Only denominator is keep on changing, incremented one, two, three, four, and five. Similarly, if I want to test six is prime number or not, I start dividing with one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this information I am going to convey to the Python interpreter by providing the following logic. I will show you this one. If i means numerator for a particular iteration i is fixed. Only j value is keep on changing. Keep on changing. J value begins from one up to the numerator value. If the numerator value in a particular interval, it is particular iteration. It is i. Why I added plus one every time here? Because it won't consider the last iteration. That's the reason I added plus one. I want to test whether the remainder is zero or not. If remainder is zero, why I testing remainder value? Why? Because according to the prime number definition, if a number is successfully divisible by only one and the same number, then only it is called as a prime number. Otherwise, it is not a prime number. So that is the reason I am capturing the remainder value. If it is remainder is zero, then only I am increment the count value. If the count is exactly two, then it indicates that it is prime number why we are comparing with two if you see here in this case four is divisible how many times four is successfully divisible by one two and four so that means more than two factors are there for four so it is not a prime number coming to five five is successfully divisible by one and five only we cannot divide five with two we cannot successfully divide five with three we cannot successfully divide five with four so only one and five are the factors for the five that is the reason if the fact number of factors are only two, that is one and itself, then it is called as prime number. Even six is also not a prime number. Why? Because six is successfully divisible by one, two, three, and six. So four factors are there. That is the reason after come coming out of the inner for loop, if the value of the count, if the value of the count is exactly two, means it is indicating that the testing value is prime number. So what is the value that we tested? I. So I in a part in first iteration, I is N1. In next iteration, N1 next number. In next iteration, N1 next next number. Like that, it is keep on incremented by one. When you are not specifying the step value here, always the series is incremented by one. So now the logic part is completed. We need to test the output. We need to test the output. So save this program in our respective directory. This is prime series, so I'm giving prime series demo dot py. Now I want to run this program by passing some input values. So we need to give st specify a start value and stop it. Suppose I given one, I given the stop value is 30. So from one to 30, how many prime numbers are there? All those numbers we are expecting as the output. If you see two is a prime number, three is a prime number, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29. See, 4 is not a prime number. Why? Because 4 is having multiple factors, more than 2 factors. Even 6 is also having more than 2 factors. 12 is also having more than 2 factors. 14, 15, 16, all these 3 numbers are having more than 2 factors. So according to our logic, it filled out unnecessary. It filled out the non-prime numbers. It prints only the prime numbers. So if you remember this logic, it is very easy to understand what is the logic I used in inside the inner for loop and why I am clearing each time the count value zero. If you see here, suppose for a, uh, after some iterations, I value is four coming to the four J value starts from one to up to four. I value is four J value is one. So four modulus one, four modulus two, four modulus three, four modulus four. What is the final count value in case of four? So four is successfully divisible by three times. Then the value that is holded in the count variable is three. But after come out of the inner for loop, it is checking count is equals to two or as count is three. So it is not matching. So it won't print the four as part of the output. Then the control will move back to the outer for loop. Now I value is incremented by one. So four becomes five. Now coming to the five, we need to reset the previous count value. We need to reset the previous count value. Why? Because the previous count value is 3. 
we need suppose when you start checking for a fresh number again we need to clear the previous value and we need to reset it that is the reason i kept this count is equals to 0 after the outer for loop so this one for each number we need to reset the count value is 0 and for each number we are iterating the denominator value 1 beginning from 1 up to that number and each time if it is successfully divisible then we are incrementing the count value once after come out of the for inner for loop we are testing is the count is exactly with the two numbers or not if it is exactly two means that is indicating that that number is prime number otherwise it is not a prime number so in this way we can print the list of prime numbers